Brisbane coming to you straight from CBN with a special broadcast from special events occurring between 1890 and 1929. We will begin our special with Kara Shirky reporting on the Wright brothers and the aviation world they began for us. Kara also has a special interview with the brothers. Kara? I'm here today reporting from North Carolina at Kitty Hawk Beach. The Wright brothers, Orville and Wilbur Wright, are about to take their first flight. They have built a glider and are now preparing to take off. The brothers are flipping the coin to see who will be the pilot of this spot. And the verdict. Orville will be piloting this spot. Wilbur and their good friend who volunteered will push the glider. The glider has to be pushed along like a cot until the wind grabs it and pulls it into the air. You have to be positioned just right. In order for this to work, Wilbur ordered Will or Orville to lie down on the wing of the glider. This will reduce the wind resistance. They are taking off now. Wilbur and Orville, what did you have to do prepare in order to prepare for your first takeoff? Over the years, we've done a lot of planning and we have experienced working in shops with printing press, bicycles, motors, and other machinery, which has allowed us to have experience before we decided to build this. The bicycle is what inspired us the most in our belief. An unstable flight like a flying machine could be controlled with balance and practice. With practice. It has taken a lot of trial and error over time as we have gotten much more experience in the process. So would you say your first flight was successful? In comparison to the practice run we had about two weeks ago, it was okay, but the next two runs were much better in increasing distance. Well, thank you for your time. I'm sure we'll be hearing your name soon. Thank you. Hi. The Wright Brothers' first takeoff was 120 feet, 37 miles, and 12 seconds. The next two were approximately 175 feet, 53 miles, and 200 feet, 61 miles. The Brothers plan on displaying their next slider December 17th. Back to you, Shelby. Thanks, Kara, for that special report on how aviation first began. Amazing how inventions have prospered. Now, on to our next story. During this time, the nation was affected by an awful flu pandemic that dropped our nation's population big time. Here is Kelly Sparks with the story. Off to you, Kelly. Location here in Haslett County, Kansas, the likely point of origin of the nation's first H1N1 flu pandemic. It has also been referred to as the Spanish flu because of its early perception of the disease's severity in Spain. This flu strain has killed more people in World War I, giving it the nickname the greatest medical holocaust in history. Contrary to popular belief, World War I did not cause the Spanish flu pandemic, but close troop quarters and massive troop movements increased transmission and augmented mutation. Some scientists seem to think that this flu virus has been transmitted from pigs to humans. Yes, you heard me right, pigs. Other scientists believe that it was transmitted from birds to humans and never came in contact with a pig. Like that's really going to make us feel any better about this situation. The deadly Spanish flu kills by overwhelming the body's immune system and causing it to overreact. Most symptoms are similar to a bad cold at first, but some are so unusual that people were initially misdiagnosed as having cholera or typhoid. For the most part, complications are the same as a normal influenza virus, but some complications are very striking. Hemorrhaging from the mucous membranes, especially the nose, stomach, and intestines occurred. Bleeding from the ears and particular hemorrhaging in the skin also occurred. It has been found that people who, con who contract the Spanish flu are also contracting pneumonia. The only treatment for the Spanish flu that has been discovered so far is injecting whole blood or blood plasma from patients that have recovered from the flu into severely afflicted ones. So if you're mo only mildly afflicted, sorry, you're out of luck. That's all from here in Hassel County, Kansas. Kelly, thanks for letting us know what effects this had on our country. The vaccines and technology that have come about lately really protect us in many ways. Moving on into the women's rights movements. Women throughout the nation were making, we have Ashley Thompson reporting. On to you, Ashley. Hello, Shelby. I'm here in Washington, D.C., along with thousands of other women celebrating what could be the most pivotal moment in women's history. Today, August 18, 1920, the 19th Amendment was ratified to give women the right to vote 
after what seemed like a never-ending battle. Over the last 100 years, many organizations have formed in support of the effort. In fact, most outcries started when Jeanette Rankin of Montana began serving in the U.S. House of Representatives just a few years ago. After they set the precedent, many states followed suit. Today, Tennessee made the 36th state to ratify the amendment, making an agreement of three-fourths of the states. Elizabeth Cady Stanton, a leading advocate of women, is here to discuss her opinion on this occasion. We are here to declare our right to be free as man is free, to be represented in such government which we are taxed to support. <clears throat> we have met to uplift women's fallen divinity upon an even pedestal with man's, and, strange as it may seem to many, we now demand our right to vote according to the declaration of government under which we live. Stanton's feelings seem to reflect that of many here in the Capitol today. Secretary of State Bainbridge Kobe will be giving his speech on the certification of the ratification later on in the evening. Back to you, Shelby. Thanks, Ashley. Women should have had all the power in the first place, right? Now on to our sports segment of the show. We have J.C. Humphrey with the invention of basketball. J.C. Here with Dr. James Naismith, the inventor of basketball here in Lawrence County, Kansas. Uh, what was the first goal? What was the first goal you used for this um, I took two beach baskets and a soccer ball, and that's how we began the game. Uh, where was your first basketball game? Then? The Lawrence County, Kansas YMCA. And what was the result of that game? One to nothing. How long were the quarters played? Two 20-minute halves. Nine for each team. Well, there's a lot more tomfoolery in it, and I personally don't like the way these people play today. 